Alright, the following is an instructional video that I'm making for chemistry teachers primarily, in which I detail an electrolysis experiment that I conducted with 6th and 7th graders during our USU Uinta Basin Science Summer Camp during the summer of 2012. In this electrolysis experiment that we did on large scale, we were able to successfully separate out the hydrogen and oxygen gases from a large volume of uh, distilled water charged with aqueous sodium hydroxide. The scale was done large enough that we were then able to detonate the hydrogen gas in a demonstration that was hopefully kind of exciting for the students present. I hope it's informative. Please enjoy. To set up our large-scale electrolysis apparatus, a 1500 milliliter glass beaker was filled with 1200 milliliters of distilled water. Two 100 milliliter glass graduated cylinders with their plastic bases removed were then suspended into the beaker using two large three-prong clamps attached to the same ring stand. 150 milliliters of 5 normal aqueous sodium hydroxide was then added to the beaker and we waited about 3 minutes for the ions to disperse into solution. To fill the graduated cylinders with sodium hydroxide solution prior to electrolysis, each graduated cylinder was fitted with a funnel and was then filled nearly to the brim with sodium hydroxide solution taken from the beaker. The mouth of each graduated cylinder was then sealed using two pieces of 6 by 6 centimeter parafilm. Being careful to avoid spillage, each graduated cylinder was then inverted and quickly submerged mouth side down in the beaker. With both cylinders now submerged mouth side down, the parafilm was carefully removed using long scissors or forceps. This successfully ensured that the graduated cylinders were filled roughly to the 100 milliliter mark with aqueous 5 normal sodium hydroxide. At this point, two large stainless steel electrodes were installed in a manner analogous to that used in our small scale apparatus with each electrode positioned at the base of each graduated cylinder so that one of its ends was protruding up into the cylinder and the other was pointing out of the beaker. Now one end of each alligator lead wire was attached to the exposed electrodes and the other end to a quad power four linear regulated power supply box. The power supply box was plugged in and turned on and gaseous evolution was instantly observed from the submerged electrodes termini at the base of each graduated cylinder. At full amperage and after about 15 minutes, enough hydrogen and oxygen gases had evolved so that their 2 to 1 relative volumes could be clearly observed. When asked to explain this observation, students readily concluded that the observed ratio was consistent with our proposed hypothesis that hydrogen and oxygen gases are present in a 2 to 1 atomic ratio in water. When asked how we could further ensure that the gas that we presumed here actually was hydrogen, students regularly and enthusiastically responded by lighting it on fire. At this point the hydrogen gas produced by the large scale apparatus was ignited. This was accomplished first by unplugging the power supply box. Then using the three prong clamp, we raised the graduated cylinder that presumably contained hydrogen up and out of the beaker. Because hydrogen is less dense than air, the pocket of hydrogen produced remained trapped in the graduated cylinder. A match fastened to the end of a yardstick was then ignited and used to detonate the small volume of hydrogen gas. The audible pop sound that emitted helped us to further identify the presumed gas to indeed be hydrogen. 